When another country in the world turns itself around by intentionally trying to be more like America, and then scolds America for not being enough like America, we get the pleasure of analyzing it all in light of the Holy Scriptures. Today on Something's Happening Here, we use the situation in El Salvador to set up a detailed study about Revelation chapters 12 and 13. I'm Steve Hicks, and it's time to buckle up, friends. Welcome to the show. Hello, friends. Welcome back. Happy Wednesday to you. Um, thank you for sticking with us. I know prophecy is always a little harder and, and a little bit less straightforward than just talking about a current event, but thank you for loving the Lord enough to stick it out with us. And um, I was talking with the producer here, and what we decided to do is to extend yesterday's program as exclusive content during our break, our, our hiatus in between seasons, because it's you just can't do justice to an incredible topic like the seven churches of revelation in 15 minutes so we want to put together a much more in-depth bible study for you and that will be available probably in pieces of it on our facebook page and youtube channel um, but really you want to join our locals community because that's where the the big exclusive content is going to be so my, migrate over to locals create a free account Join the, the community right now. It's not a uh, supporter community yet, but it will be soon. And if you want access to uh, this big seven churches Bible study when we're ready for it, that's where you need to be. Okay, so let's get back to the topic at hand here, which is um, events in the current modern day that have a prophetic significance. And what we're going to do today is look at a specific... Um, instance of something that happened in El Salvador, not even the United States, but, but way down in South America. And we're going to see how well, that's going to set up a two-day Bible study. Tomorrow we'll look at Revelation 12, the day after Revelation 13. And we're going to hopefully see the hints of what is still to come as expressed by this El Salvadorian leader. So let's get to it. The article for today comes from dailywire.com and the, uh, the title is El Salvador President Addresses Soldiers Battling Gang Violence Has an Ominous Word for America. So we're gonna address both of those things, okay? The first part where he's addressing the soldiers and what is that all about? So video of Salvadoran President and I, I'm going to butcher this name, I'm sure, but I'm going to say Naib Bukele, and my apologies if anybody knows that that is an incorrect pronunciation, but video of the Salvadoran president addressing soldiers tasked with battling rampant gang activity went viral on social media as the small Latin American nation seeks to control violent crime. What does that mean? El Salvador saw a 56.8% decrease in the murder rate last year as the nation's government launched an operation against gangs such as MS-13, which is especially infamous for its brutal killings of women and children. Salvadoran authorities arrested some 64,000 suspected gang members in less than one year. And that's really what this is all about. Um, through these strong-armed and literally military tactics, uh, this current regime of El Salvador appears to have brought the rampant crime problem under control. Appears to. Uh, certainly it's made a huge dent in it and brought the murder rate down by more than half in just one year. That's an incredible statistic. Um, but nothing in there was this ominous word for America. So we have to scroll down a little bit to see what he says in that regard. And we find it right here. The official appeared to contrast the rise of El Salvador amid the crackdown on criminality with the decline of the United States, where major cities are increasingly characterized by violence. Um, we, actually, I want to stop there. So are you even aware that the United States is increasingly characterized by violence? If you live in a nice, peaceful community, maybe you don't realize that. So let me just refresh your memory. Since probably 2020, violent crime has been going up ridiculously, astronomically, 
in at least our major cities in the United States. And so you may remember the like seven or eight months in a row where every city was just on fire in, in the mid and latter part of 2020. Um, although the acute damage there did stop, the problem didn't, right? The, the problem, uh, all you have to do is like Google murder rate statistics in the United States. Um, and you'll see that, uh, you know, violent assaults and murders went up in, like in Portland, I saw a figure like 400% in Portland, Oregon. Um, hundreds of percents or dozens of percentages increase in every major city, New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Baltimore, Denver, um, Chicago. All of these major cities are seeing this problem increase and increase. Um, and you may remember, I mean, all of this coincided with the big push to defund police across the nation. And our news media will never link those things as a causal relationship, but here I am. I am linking that. When you take away the law enforcement, then the law doesn't get enforced. And it seems pretty straightforward to me. In any case, regardless of where you want to put the blame for this, violent crime is through the roof in the United States right now. And this article from Daily Wire touches on some specifics. So for example, uh, it continues and says, video of organized smash and grab robberies, as well as brazen murders and attacks on unsuspecting American urbanites frequently circulate on social media. Uh, the smash and grab robberies, you're gonna see um, like San Francisco is the king of this problem or queen of this problem, so to speak. Um, they're, major chains were shutting down stores because of this problem, which was fueled, in my humble opinion, by California state government choosing not to prosecute robberies of less than $1,000. So it's like, these people know this, they're not dumb. They know they can walk into any store and put $999 worth of stuff in their pockets and walk away. No one's going to do anything. Even if they're caught, they'll be released back out into the street with no real consequence by the end of the day, probably. And so this has just destroyed California, in my humble opinion. This is one of the reasons why I am relocating. I just, I can't, I don't feel safe raising my kids in this environment anymore. Um, the other thing that was mentioned, brazen murders and attacks on unsuspecting American urbanites. Um, that's happening everywhere, but um, just a few months ago, there was that case in uh, New York City where some dude was just like standing in the subway waiting for the train and some lunatic unprovokedly walks up behind him and just smashes him in the back of the head for no reason. A an attack unprovoked and ultimately for no reason except the mental illness of the person doing the attacking. So... Um, these are just a few examples. This problem is everywhere. So the article continues and says, the international attention toward El Salvador indeed comes as a report from the Marshall Project showed that authorities in the United States solved less than 50% of homicides in 2020, which is the latest metric in a long decline since the 70% of homicides that were solved in the 1980s. This means that over the course of my life, my personal biological life, crime has been on the rise. Now, it's not like a straight line. There was that period in the 1990s where everything seemed kind of like we were at the end of history. The Soviet Union had collapsed. Everybody was happy all the time. Friends was the most important thing on TV, you know, um, but it didn't stay that way. It, crime has gone up pretty solidly since that point. So that's the world in which we live. Now, the article continues and gets to the actual condemnation of the U.S. here. <clears throat> uh, the President Bukele, and again, apologies if I'm saying that wrong, he says, these are the fundamental values for human society, but these values are increasingly scarce in the world. If you watch the international news, you will see how the most important values for human beings, such as honor, loyalty, bravery, courage and love for your fellow man are precisely the values that we are losing with each passing day. 
And that is why you can see how societies that seemed to have won now, and he means us, he means the United States, seemed to have won now are degrading as they, as they are losing the values that made them great. These values were probably not strong in this land, meaning El Salvador, and were strong in other lands. And that is why those lands grew and became great. But they are losing those values now. Man, that is a mouthful, isn't it? I mean, he's quite literally saying everything that made you the world dominant superpower that saved everybody from Hitler in World War II and reshaped the world in your image for two generations, three generations, you have thrown all those things away. Whereas I, down here in my backwards little country, we didn't have those things and we weren't great. And now we're trying them. And we are becoming greater even while you throw all of your basis away because you're in decline. Does that sound like, does it sound like he's speaking the truth, friends? It does to me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just had a little internal dialogue of whether or not I should say the thought that was in my head. And I decided it probably should not. <laughs> Sometimes you get yourself in trouble by speaking out of turn. So uh, I'm going to save that comment for a different time. But um, this man from a continent away is seeing what many Americans living inside of it right now simply refuse to see. This land is not what it used to be. And we're actually going to see some specific examples on Friday if, if this works out the way it is in my head. We're going to see some things that are happening right now that are indicative of the, the place from which we have fallen, the grace from which we have fallen. And over the next two days, I want to show us how ultimately it's prophetic. It's guaranteed. God told us a long time ago that it was going to happen this way, which means our choice as believing Christian people who believe what God says and want to align ourselves with him, the choice that we have is not to pick the better political party, right? Pick the one that's going to save us from these problems. Because you can't escape prophecy. It's going to be the way that God said it's going to be. Our choice as believers is to simply align ourselves with Jesus Christ. Okay? And if we do that, we may find that one political party kind of speaks to our hearts more so than the other one. But the, prophet, the mature prophetic kind of way to realize life in the 21st century is that there is no safe place to be except with Jesus Christ, okay? The Republicans will not save you. They may save you from the Democrats, but they're not going to save you from themselves, right? <laughs> because uh, we've, we've talked about this, and I know I'm running out of time, but if you review any one of our previous episodes where I talk about Daniel chapter 11, um, my, my entire kind of takeaway from that prophecy is this back and forth between opposing political and social forces. So right now, we are under assault by what I am calling the king of the south in light of that, that prophecy. But that prophecy shows us that will only continue until the king of the north fights back with greater power. Right? So right now, we're in a position that a lot of believers are unhappy with. And we're looking to Eric Adams and we're applauding this dude in El Salvador. We're saying, hallelujah, we want to return to more Christian, more, more goodly and godly things. And I'm just here to tell you like, okay, that's great. And it may even work out. But prophetically, it won't work out forever. It's just going to give rise to even worse things. So I'm, I'm, I'm not in the... I don't look forward to ending these episodes on a down note, okay? So I just need you to have faith that we're going on an up note before we're done at the end of the week, okay? And our takeaway is Jesus Christ is the safe place to be. With Christ, doesn't really even much matter what else happens in the world, even if the worst thing happens. The worst damage sin can do is death. Even if that worst thing happens, hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus has the keys of Hades and death, right? So he's going to rescue you from even that worst damage of sin. 
my appeal to you today, friends. Let's ignore as much as possible the Democrats, the Republicans, the El Salvadorans, right? All of these forces that are just making noise. And let's go to Jesus Christ today and every day because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. So the righteous run to it and are safe. And that's Proverbs uh, 1810, I believe, if you want to put that reference on the screen. (laughs) All right, friends, God bless you. Um, Let's have a quick prayer, and then I will see you tomorrow when you are fully subscribed. But Lord God in heaven, this is a scary time to be alive, and it's certainly a scary time to raise children. But we rejoice in the knowledge that every scary thing is ultimately leading to the return of Jesus Christ and your perfect kingdom, which shall never end. So bless us and keep us and protect us until that great day, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now go get subscribed. Like the Facebook page. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Bookmark the podcast page on TalkingDonkeyInternational.org. Follow button on Rumble. And most especially, if you want all that extra content, create your free Locals account and become part of that community right now. God bless you, friends. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.